In the previous two videos, we looked at diffraction, how a wave bends when it passes through a gap or goes around a barrier, and we looked at interference or superposition, how two waves can overlap and constructively or destructively interfere. Interference is a combination of these two ideas. Because a funny thing happens in an interference pattern. If you have light shone through two slits, instead of just seeing a reflection of these two slits on a screen on the other side, you actually see a whole series of lines, a brightest one in the middle and then on either side, a whole series of lines fading out to each side. This is an interference pattern and this video is about understanding how that happens. And it happens through diffraction and through interference and superposition. So let's go into a bit more detail. Here we have a schematic view of a whole lot of wave fronts. So each of these lines here represents a wave crest, so the very, very top of a wave. And halfway between these lines represents a wave trough, so the very lowest point in a wave. So here we have a whole series of waves. And these two gaps here represent the two gaps in this previous diagram, the two gaps that the light is shining through. Hopefully you remember from diffraction that when waves pass through a gap that is at least similar to its gap size, you're going to see the waves spread out and you're going to see diffraction occurring. So you can actually see that diffraction is occurring with both of these slits. Now another thing that you'll notice is you'll see that all of these waves are crossing over each other now that you have two lots of diffraction overlapping. And hopefully you'll remember from superposition that when waves overlap, they can either constructively interfere if they're in phase or destructively interfere and cancel if they're out of phase. So here, as you see all of these crosses, here are all points that we have constructive interference because we have a wave crest and another wave crest. That's two ups, so we're going to get constructive interference. The same with this next cross, the same with the third, and the same with the fourth. That would happen again when these two lines cross over. You would get constructive interference. So actually, we have a line of constructive interference here. In the same way where you can see these green crosses, as a line crosses over the middle of another two lines, now remember, a line is an up, it's the very crest, and between two lines is a trough, that means you're going to get destructive interference, because we have this line coming around from the top, and we're in the middle of the two lines coming around from the bottom. That means we're going to have destructive interference. And the same thing happens between these two lines here, and with this line coming around from the top. We have a whole line here of destructive interference. What that means is, we can look at both of these lines and we actually have to give them names. The line of destructive interference down the bottom here, where they cancel out, is called a nodal line. That's a line of destructive interference. And if you want to imagine it, there's node movement, just for a kind of pun, a way to remember it. Now, node movement means it's all being destructed because it has destructive interference. Now, in a kind of counterintuitive way, antinodal lines, the opposite of nodal lines, are areas or lines of constructive interference. So you're going to have really, really, really big waves along this line of constructive interference and absolutely no waves along this line of destructive interference because they're perfectly cancelling each other out. So if you were to actually see this, what it would look like if you shone light through two slips, it would look like this. This is a photo. You see a whole series of lines. Now these bright spots here are where the light has been constructively interfering. That means we have an antinodal line, a line of constructive interference. Between each of these bright spots of constructive interference, we can have these dark patches where there is no light at all. Even though the light's diffracting, it's actually being cancelled out by opposite wavelengths of light. That means we've got destructive interference or nodal lines. And that's shown on this diagram by the dark patches where there is actually no light. So the light has actually been cancelled out and there is no light existing there. And these areas where the light does exist is actually a whole lot brighter because it's been constructively interfered with. Just as an aside, if you get actively noise cancelling headphones, it does the same thing. Now this doesn't just work for light. This might work for sound or any other type of wave. So if you hooked up two types of speakers and they were perfectly in sync, which is actually very hard to get speakers that good of quality, you would see that we have a whole lot of lines booming out from each speaker, and they're playing the same note, so we have the same pattern of lines crossing over each other. We're going to get areas of constructive interference 
and areas of destructive interference again. So looking at this diagram, you can see that these lines are perfectly crossing over a crest and a crest, trough and a trough, crest and a crest, trough and a trough, crest and a crest. That is a line of constructive interference. And you will always see a line of constructive interference smack bang down the middle. Now again, you'll notice there are other lines of constructive interference. Here we have two crests. Here we have two crests. There's lots of crests all around which are crossing over each other. And as we move out, we're going to see them again. And that's why you saw a whole lot of bright patches in the previous picture. Because there was not only one area of constructive interference, but there are multiple lines of constructive interference. And in the same way, there are multiple lines of destructive interference occurring between each of these constructive interference lines. Here's an example where this wave crest here is passing over exactly this wave trough where we see the green line. So we have a line of destructive interference. Again, we have multiple lines. And that would mean with speakers, you're going to hear really loud where you have really intense constructive interference of sound and then almost no sound at all where you have destructive interference of the sound. Here's what you need to take away from this video. The first thing you need to take away is that a source of light can actually diffract through two different slits. Now this is what causes an interference pattern. The second thing that happens is once these waves have diffracted, they overlap to produce lines of constructive interference, these are the dark lines here, and destructive interference, which is these dotted lines here. Now nodes of constructive interference are called antinodal lines, and lines of destructive interference are called nodal lines. The last thing you need to remember is that that's shown by areas of high intensity. Now high intensity just means that wave is much stronger than it would have been. So if it's light, that means it's much brighter than it would have been before. If it's sound, it's much louder than it would have been before. Whatever the wave is, it's exaggerated in constructive interference. And you can see these little dark patches. This is a diffraction pattern with a laser. These dark patches are areas of destructive interference where the laser light is actually completely cancelling out with itself as we have destructive interference. Let's look at a problem now. In this problem, Sandy's physics teacher takes the students out to the playing field where he has placed two speakers close together as shown in this diagram here. The two speakers produce the same sound. Explain what the students hear as they walk from point A on this left hand side to point B. In our answer, we need to include ideas about interference. As soon as you read in a question that you have two sources of waves, you've got two speakers like in this question, or you might have two slits in a paper, or something with two sources of waves, you have to know that that's an interference question. So when we think about what's going to happen, both of these speakers are going to give off waves. These waves are going to overlap, and they're going to produce areas of constructive interference and areas of destructive interference. So if you were walking from point A over to point B, you would hear really loud sounds as you move past the constructive interference areas, and it's going to go much quieter when you go past the destructive interference areas. So your answer would look something like this. As the students move, they'll hear alternating soft sounds and loud sounds. This is due to interference. The loud sounds are where there's constructive interference, and the soft sounds are where there is destructive interference. And that is how interference patterns work.